Hi, I'm John Gruners. I love locations, and even when I have a completed script, it's not until I begin to discover the locations that that script really comes to life and a project becomes real. Well, thanks to people like Tammy Lane of Capernaum Studios, filmmakers can, you know, make films. Meet her today on No Shame. Have no shame. All right, welcome to the No Shame Podcast, studio owner, movie magnet, and all-around producer of content, Tammy Lane. Tammy, welcome to our podcast in the middle of the hallway. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. So I have just been hearing about you over the past year from a variety of places. So first, last year at the Christian Worldview Film Festival, I'm seeing episodes of Dallas Jenkins' Chosen, and he's talking about, I shot this film that looks like Israel, and I shot it in Texas. And then I walk into a movie screening here yesterday, and it's called Washington's Armor, and it looks like I'm in colonial, uh, you know, <laughs> upstate New England, and they go, yeah, we shot it in Texas. And the more I'm hearing about this, I think of another one, maybe it was Daily Bread shot here? I don't even no. know if that was there. No. But you, you've got a deal going in Texas, and it's, you tell me. Well, it's called um, Capernaum Studios. And it is outside of Weatherford, Texas. You know where that's at? I know where Texas is, yes, absolutely. Right there on the, <laughs> the southern border. State. Yeah, so it's outside of Dallas-Fort Worth area. Okay. And um, we built a studio. And, and uh, the reason that we did is because I felt like about mm, 15 years ago or so, the Lord wanted me to do these seven biblical short films. Okay. And so I hired a producer. This was before pre-Capernaum Studios. Hired a producer to come teach me because I knew nothing of anything or how to do anything. And so we did the uh, short films. And we rented a studio, a really large studio space, and built a biblical village inside of it. Okay. Um, which costs a lot of money. Yeah. And it also, you know, and you have to have the art team and come in and build all that. And so I prayed and asked the Lord if there's a better way. And like he said, he wanted me to build a biblical village. Yeah, they're yelling in the hallway. Apparently it's lunchtime. And that's the interview uh, on our podcast about lunchtime. So if you're hungry, that's why. But you can tell this is a, it's a live environment. A studio. Let's talk about a studio. Okay, Tammy, I've shot in studios all over the world, and they come in all different shapes and sizes. What's your studio like? Well, so we have different sets. We have the Biblical Village set, which is a first century set. It can be used, of, you know, in a number of different ways. Um, we also have, like, a back lot Main Street set. And... Um, like a war section set. Um, we have a set, some set, new sets that we use for Washington's Armor, which is like a cabin and a fort set. So we have all kinds of sets, and we have ranch land. So if anybody just wants land, there's just a lot of that. And too. then sound stages as well, big interiors, or we have a, a sound stage, okay, a pretty large sound stage. Wow. So, yeah, we got, and there's also um, a house there with six bedrooms, so people can stay there. And um, we have a big pavilion area for people to eat. We have a temple, too, that, you know, we can use for different things and that kind of set. So, Dallas Jenkins, he used a bunch of different ones on the property. So. Now, now, Tammy, you sound so nonchalant about all of this, but this didn't just fall into place, did it? I mean, what what is it taking to build all this? Well, it's taking a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> um, time and, you know, just a lot of work, but it's it's been worth it. And I really felt like initially when, when we started building it that I, that I was going to be using it for not only our films, but other Filmmakers could come and use it, you know, for a, a better price than having to go to LA or somewhere like that, so that they could get it more inexpensively and do their projects, make it easier for other people to do their projects. Well, listen, if you're a filmmaker at all, 
and 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 I am. What you're what you're saying right now is is like water to the thirsty because we've got to have locations. I spent a lot of time looking for locations. Last week I was in film sets in Romania, spending a week you know scouting film sets, and looking for one thing, and then walking through and going, oh my goodness, I could do a totally different thing here, and all of a sudden whole new scripts are forming in my mind because the place exists. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I mean, I'm not kidding. It's, it's that important that we have places to work. And as I mentioned on the floor, I've shot a lot in Israel. I've, I've, I've used every trick I can use to try to recreate, within the budgets I have, biblical villages. And, and I love them. And there was one called Bible Times that used to be in, in Ein Kerem, which was where John the Baptist was from. And they really did a nice job. And, and people would go there and uh, experience different things from biblical but I was able to go there and create, you know, if you light it right and you should let, you know, really great Abrahamic tents and crosses. Another place in Israel called Nazareth Village, which has for years been available to us and cooperative yeah. with us. Mm-hmm. And Nothing it sits there. right in the middle of urban Nazareth, so you've got to not shoot super wide shots or else you've got to composite out the backgrounds. But we've shot at night there, day and night. So I love that we can tell Bible stories in, in sort of authentic locations because the land was part of the story. Right. And so I haven't been to Capernaum Studios in your Capernaum, but but I'm imagining that you've been able to sort of recreate the foliage, the fauna of what it looks like in the Galilee or, or in Israel. Is that does that feel right to you? Yeah, I mean, if you've seen the Chosen, right? I mean, that's a good example because they came in and they used our sets and built on a little bit too, and then we've incorporated that to keep some of the stuff they've done. So, so yeah, it's pretty awesome. Mm. So what about like the, um, all the support that's needed, right? So one of the things when you go to some of the big studios in L.A., you know, they've got a lighting grip company attached or right down the street because it takes a lot to light up a set. Are you guys have partnerships with uh, Grip and Electric and stuff like that? We've got great connections that we can connect people with. Um, there's some good places in Dallas that we work with. And um, we also have a lot of, like, extras or actors that we know. We have a huge pool of actors. Um, We have costumes. If you need biblical costumes, we've got a ton of those. We also now have some colonial and some different stuff. We've got props there as well. So we're we're getting there. We're trying to get, you know, you know, good system going and... And, um, and, and still working on it and continuing to grow. Well, we're so, I'm so pumped to, to meet you and encourage you in what you're doing and thank you for what you're doing. And I saw part of Washington's Armor yesterday. Tell me a little bit about that project and your personal piece of it all because you're quite involved in this one. Well, about 10 years ago, um, I read a book called Bulletproof George Washington by David Barton. And it's a story of young George Washington when he was 20 to 23 years old, when he um, just starts out in his military career, basically, or just really starts out with anything. And um, I just find it so interesting to see how, how God just divinely protected him through so much stuff. I mean, like he went through amazing things that w- would be normally impossible, really. And I really wanted to tell that story. I didn't know it, and I learned it, and I really wanted to tell it, prayed about it. And, you know, I thought I'd be doing it 10 years ago, but that didn't happen. So here I am now. The time is right, and um, the Lord has opened the door for us to to film the first episode. And we want to do six episodes, so it'll be an episodic series. So it's, it's just, it's really exciting. I directed it. And um, I'm the executive producer, so we're just now talking to lots of distributors and getting mm. getting it out there. Mm. I'm talking with Tammy Lane here at ICBM on the hotel floor at the Marriott in Franklin, Tennessee. And Tammy from Texas running Compernium Studios, creating programming, building sets. I mean, this is the nuts and bolts of filmmaking is what you're doing. And uh I'm so excited about so many things. I mean, I can't even get into all this on this podcast, but I am passionate about retelling American history stories. I love David Barton. I've written a number of screenplays myself. We're launching an entire company called America Studios. Wow. And I just, I want to connect with you on these ideas and I want to be mutually helpful in any way that we can. Um, That'd be cool. I am so 
completely sold out on the idea that we can tell the stories of what they called providence, mm-hmm. and, and right. we need to tell them because they're not making it into into the movies and the curriculums that are being taught That's to our right. kids today. Mm-hmm. Washington was clearly protected and selected by God. Let's yeah. just he was selected by God, yeah, and when he handed power over to the second president, the world changed. Mm-hmm. That was the end of the monarchy when he handed it over to John Adams. Mm-hmm. Had he not done that, he changed his mind. He could have been another king. Oh yeah. What a godly choice yeah. he made, and we yeah. still live in some semblance of the freedom that he helped create. So yeah, he was very humble, and you know, um, I found it really interesting that he he was so sick all the time. He had so many illnesses, and he persevered. His his tenacity and perseverance to go through all the difficulties he went to to become the father of our country. You know, it was just, he had serious illnesses like malaria two to three times, tuberculosis, smallpox. Um, (laughs) He had the flu whenever, we don't know if it was the flu, it was either that, I've heard dysentery, one or the other. Whenever he started on the French and Indian War, um, I mean, I would, I don't know (laughs) how he did that. No. You don't amazing. think about those kind of details when you look at the portraits, you know, when you see him no. standing crossing the Delaware, you know. <laughs> you don't think the fact that the guy's probably got dysentery. I mean, it's just hard to function, isn't it? Oh, when yeah. When you feel bad, when, you, yeah, when your when head is sick. pounding. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but that was a reality in, 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 you know, in those days. And it makes the fact that they had clarity of thought or the ability to have wisdom and leadership or even, even the battle maneuverings that he did. Yeah, I selfless. Mean, if we can tell these stories accurately, mm-hmm. and it's not easy because we're all more than a two-hour movie. Mm-hmm. Our lives are much right. more than a, a two-hour right. movie. But I don't think that the challenge is above us or beyond us to try to understand the essence of the great leaders that created the world's first experiment in government by the people, of the people, and for the people. That's right. And I want to tell those stories, too. And I want to con- congratulate you on actually getting it done. It might take me 10 years to get this first movie done, but I, uh, I know it's inspiring and I know there's an audience for it if we tell it well. Yeah. And there's been some great writers, some great biographers. There seems to be some uh, percolating up for this, and I just want to be part of putting them on the screen this, the same as you do. And, uh, That's Capernaum awesome. Studios I'm Tanner. glad because uh, we need people in America need to see this and, and what the founders went through to get us where we are, where we can enjoy our freedoms today. When, and I believe it's not only going to be American people who are like going to be appreciative of their history, but there are so many cultures around the world who are oppressed yeah. so horribly, and the same ideals that mm. convinced those people 300 years ago will be very compelling, in my opinion, to people that are sort of getting... Un- That's good, How do you yeah. think that people in Hong Kong would respond today if they could see a, a, a powerful message and what it took to fight for freedom because right. they're right in the crosshairs yeah, right are. now. I mean, mm-hmm. it might be too late for the Chinese, but they'll still be interested. These are important stories. America did do it at one time. Yeah. They took the risk. They paid the price. Yeah. And and time after time, maybe even the very survival of George Washington, that he should have probably died from malaria. He probably right. should have died from tuberculosis. You look at this in total and you... I mean, okay, we're, we're, we're believers, so I will have to admit that I come with a paradigm, but I see the hand of providence at right. work, and other filmmakers don't. So let's just, here's what they said, here's what they wrote, mm-hmm. here's what happened. Mm-hmm. But if we really read the writings of Adams and Franklin, and, and you know, David right. Barton's done an incredible book on yes. Thomas Jefferson, The Jefferson yep. Lies. Yep. Unbelievable work by David Barton. Let's read their own words, mm-hmm. not just the spin right. that history yes. has put on it. Yep. And you know what? They had a faith and a confidence in the scriptures that mm-hmm. blows my mind. Yeah, they did. They and, and isn't it awesome that we can read those letters? We can read all that stuff that they that they wrote. They left for us, you know. I mean, they left right. their story there basically so that we can read it and and tell it. You know, thank you to the historians. T- thank yes. you to the libraries. Thank you to the mm-hmm. collections, because otherwise they can get spun. <laughs> And all of a sudden, they weren't believers in God. They were Mm -hmm. just deists. Otherwise, they can become people that, well, they really think the way we think today. But because we have their handwritten letters in longhand with with quill and ink, it's undeniably their thoughts and their words. And I've got a a script. I was so excited to see a young Washington because I've got one on young Franklin. Oh, cool. And just a slice of his life. I want to see it. Not a full bio. (laughs) 
but you know he's working in Philadelphia for his brother he's got all these ideas no one wants to hear him his brother won't publish him I mean these are wonderful and at that time he's exploring God and it's a long journey for all of us Ben Franklin wrote in his own hand writings I'm, they read like the Psalms they read like David's Psalms and wow. you're like that's yeah. Benjamin Franklin I thought he was blah 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 that I've been yeah. taught okay well your life is long but he wrote this Anyway, it's quite a journey to tell these stories. And it is. It's it's amazing. Tammy Lane from Capernaum Studios in some unpronounceable town in Texas. What's it called again? Uh, <laughs> well, I live in Fort Worth, but but Capernaum is in um, Poolville, actually, Texas. Okay. If you want to know the exact town, I mean, you don't really see a town. It's in the country, <laughs> but it's outside of north of Weatherford. So. All right, you what Texans who. Who know Texas know right where Poolville and Weatherford is. <laughs> well, but, um, maybe. I can't Texas wait to come and visit you, Tammy. And uh, yeah, that'd be I awesome. I want to see your studios. I want to see them grow. Um, I love work. Just, just for you guys. I mean, so I was on a scout last week in Romania, and I spent ten days scouting. Right. I'm filming another project there. So it's a mixture of, you know, locations in the mountains, locations in the real in the real world. And I've visited two massive studios. Why do we want to work in studios? Well, because we can control the environment. I'm doing a period piece. I mean, I'm doing a 1936 to 1944 film. I can't have modern cars and buses and trains coming through the, the frames. It's so hard to get those off the modern streets. Even if we can art direct the modern streets of Bucharest to bring us back to 1942, <laughs> the reflections in the windows so things so yeah. studios are so important mm-hmm. and we also don't want it to ever look like we're shooting in a studio <laughs> right like we don't want to give away that these are flats or yeah. that they saw the same street in dallas jenkins's movie or they saw yeah. the same street so right. we've got to be creative with our angles and our lighting and right. our art direction and our atmospherics and our lenses but once we get all those things done you giving us space to create these stories and, and accumulating, like you said, now we've got biblical costumes, thank you, Dallas. Now we've got some colonial costumes, thank you, Washington. You're going to collect things over time and then other filmmakers come along later and get to, to rent those for a very good price because it's cheaper than building them from scratch. Yep, that's right. It's, it's, it makes it available for everyone. So, cause we want to, we want everybody to be able to do their project. You know, this, the, the message of Christ needs to get out there. So, you know, and people talk about taking trips to the Holy <laughs> Land, okay, mm-hmm. the Holy Land. And I'm here to tell you the land itself is not holy. What's holy is the presence of God. What's yeah. holy is the presence of God. God says to the bush, you know, in Saudi Arabia, Moses, take off your shoes, you're standing on holy ground. We don't call Saudi Arabia, or wherever that happened yeah. to be. Midian, is a, there's some dispute, but we don't call that one. It was holy because God was there. I love Israel. I've done 80 episodes in Israel. I love shooting in Israel, and I, I am inspired to be in Israel. But we can shoot the same holiness anywhere if the presence of God is there. Right. So you don't have to be... Act- and it's tough to shoot in Jerusalem because it doesn't look like it did. Um, mm-hmm. We can actually work better in your studio in some ways than we can in the real places, so... Don't be afraid to call Tammy Lane, and yeah. pretty soon you'll have like you know dark rides and you know tours and tour buses traveling like Universal <laughs> Studios does, and um, we can dream. Yeah. We can dream bigger than you can ever spend. Um. Yeah, really. <laughs> Tammy, awesome. uh, thank you for being on the podcast today, and we wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Tammy Lane, Capernaum Studios. No Shame is a weekly podcast where John Groders discusses life at the intersection of faith and culture with all kinds of interesting and inspiring guests. Subscribe to the podcast today by going to johngroders.com, select the podcast tab, and hit subscribe. Listen whenever you have time, but don't miss any of these life-giving conversations.